What is going on, my fellow anglers? Mark here, Waist Deep Wade Fishing, Southwest Florida. Hope all is going well. It is hotter than Hades out here today. Whew, man, just got back from the beach. <clears throat> Went out on a quick uh, snook stalking mission. Managed to get one. Uh, I'm gonna throw that clip in here a little bit later. It wasn't a big one, you know, 20 something inches. But nevertheless, it was a snook. So, today, jumping right into it, not playing no games. A lot of people have been commenting uh, and asking me, Mark, how do you find the snook on a three mile stretch of beach? Where do you start? What do you look for? Well, today, that's what we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna make it short and sweet. I do wanna say thank you to my new sponsor, Aqua Dream Spoons. Thank you for bringing me aboard your pro staff. Um, all the links will be in the description if you're looking to get yourself one of these Aqua Dream spoons. Just click on the link, it'll bring you right to the website, and then you can go ahead and figure out what works for you. Or you can use what works for me. It's entirely up to you. All I can do is tell you what works. If you want to try it, try it. If you want to go out on your own and experiment, go out on your own and experiment. But, you know, the most important thing is just get out there try different techniques, try new lures, try new colors, see what works in your area. All right, I'm getting off the beaten path here. Let's get to it. So, what we wanna talk about, period. How do we find these snook? What are we looking for on these beaches? You know, what are the signs? So, okay, we get to the beach, right? Boom, there's three miles of beach, okay? You got the mile and a half this way, mile and a half this way. Where do we start? What are we looking for? Well, first thing we're going to do, okay, is maybe do a little homework before we go to that beach, okay? Get on the satellite, get on Google Earth, look at the beach you're going to target. Use the satellite to look for breaks in the waves. When you find those breaks in the waves from the satellite photos, okay, set a pin on your phone for that beach. Most likely, that is gonna be a cut in the sandbar. Now we're gonna go into it a little bit deeper later on on what those cuts mean. But those are the first things you wanna look for. Cuts in the sandbar, why? Well, when that tide is coming in, it's gonna funnel all the bait through those cuts. Guess what's gonna be sitting on the other side of those cuts? Yep, you guessed it. And this time of year, snook. Now, depending on which side of those cuts, uh, that they're going to be hanging out and depends on the tide and uh, again yeah coca-cola they're not sponsoring me but I'm thirsty so I'm going for it uh, so next you went onto the satellite you've mapped out your area you found a couple of guts well what else what else can be an indicator while you're looking on lurking on the re the beach for where the snook could be hanging out well if you're walking along a stretch of beach Look for shell piles. Let's say you have sand, 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 and then a pile of shell. That is going to tell you that there is a cut inside of that sandbar, and shell and debris is getting filtered through and getting pushed up onto the shore. So, so far, we have locating guts, looking for shell on the beach, possibly um, driftwood, sometimes garbage, um, anything that looks out of the ordinary, okay, on that beach is, is gonna give you an indicator of possibly being a gut. Now, if you have a gut on the beach, that's where you wanna start. On an incoming tide, okay, you have the cut, and you have your, your first gut, and then you have the trough. Okay, and this is you. Now let's say you get to the beach on a low tide and you're waiting for the incoming. Well, that trough line is gonna be too thin. There's not gonna be too many snook up in there. Okay, but where the snook are going to be before that tide comes in, they're gonna be in the gut. So if you've walked down the beach, you've located an area where you see some debris, you see some shell. Okay, maybe you see an eddy. You see water that's coming in a little bit faster than the water around you. Okay, that is where you want to start. So you get on the beaches, walk down the beach, look and look and look and look and look. 
Okay, and throw while you, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't not throw, okay, as you're walking. But if you're hunting big snook in the summertime in southwest Florida, okay, or on the west coast, the east coast is a little bit different, but on the west coast, when you're using a search bee, okay, such as a paddle tail, a spoon, okay, you want to find the most productive area out there. Okay, so to rehash, use the satellite, locate the guts on that specific part of the beach you're gonna be working. If you can't do that, when you get to the beach and you don't have access to satellite and you forgot to do it and it was a last minute thing, walk the beach till you find something that looks different on that beach than the sand you're walking on. Uh, a debris pile, driftwood, pile of shell, okay? what I call weird water. If you see water moving this way and all of a sudden you see another rip current going this way or you see a, a pocket of water turning, okay, or it's turbulent, or if you have good clarity, you can see that bait is getting washed up into this specific area, by all means, hit that area hard because it's gonna hold snook, okay? Now, incoming tide, that's the best tide for me, period. I, I don't really work in outgoing tide. Um, nine out of 10 times, if it's an outgoing tide, those snook are going to be on the outer gut. So what I mean is you have the beach, the trough, the first gut, the sandbar, then the second gut. I don't usually want to be out that far during the summertime, so I prefer to work the inside gut. So before we go any further, I'm going to show you exactly what I did today. It's a quick clip, but I found a pile of shell, okay, on the beach. I started throwing right in front of that area, directly in front, inside the gut, as the tide was coming in, and Good morning, everybody. And uh, we have <laughs> crystal clear water, perfect conditions. This morning, we're starting it off with the Aqua Dream Spoon, the Silver in the Red, 20 pound, um, uh, what's it called? 20 pound monofilament leader, eight pound braid, seven foot medium action, St. Croix Avid Inshore, and a Stratic FL 3000 XG. So we've got good conditions here. I'm getting everything set up and we are gonna start throwing. What we're doing here is we're throwing along the trough. Try not to make too much noise. We got high water. Hopefully we can pick one up here. All right, first one. Got our first nook of the day. <laughs> Looky there. All right. Okay, okay. All right, welcome back, guys. So, to sum it up, um, you are going to look for abnormalities on the beach, okay? If you can find a point, if you can find um, a blowdown, if you can find a shell mound, if you have, have you located the cuts inside of the outside sandbar into the first gut, uh, remember, incoming tide is the time to fish that style. Um, what else could I say that would work? If you ha should happen to find um, a, a, I'm not going to even say a cut, but let's say you're walking along the beach and you happen to throw the lure and you find a deeper pocket. So let's say you're bumping that in two or three foot of water in the gut and then it, you can feel it hitting bottom, you can feel it hitting bottom, and then it drops. Well, 
any abnormality along that beach, something that's going to pro provide cover, that's going to wash up the bait and give the snook a place to ambush is where you're going to find them. So guys, I hope that little bit of a tip helps you guys out when you're walking those beaches. Again, you can book me anytime. You can reach me, all my contact, all my contact information will be linked in the description. You know, as I'm always taking bookings and I love to teach everybody out there how to do this. Again, the lures of the month have been the Aqua Dream White Spoon and the Aqua Dream Silver and Red Spoon. Those two baits have produced all of the snook that I have been catching over the last, I'm gonna say 35, 40 days. All right, guys, I wanna thank everyone for liking, subscribing, and sharing. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed that tip. And remember, leave a comment. If there's anything, you, you know, you, any questions you wanna ask, feel free to, to ask them. You know, I'm gonna answer them for you, all right? So stay tuned, get on those beaches, look for those signs, look for those abnormalities, get there on the beginning of the incoming tide. Look and make sure you watch your moons and make sure you watch your coefficients. You want moving water. Just because the water's coming in, it may take eight hours to come in. That's not the water you want. You want water moving between a coefficient of 65 to 95 you want to get there on a low tide or the beginning of the low tide, preferably in the morning at first light with a two, with a, you know, two or four tide day, depending on the coefficient. You want incoming water, walk the beach, look for abnormality, excuse me, abnormalities and find things that look out of the ordinary, that look like they don't belong. If you find those, that's going to be an indicator that there is a cut in that sandbar and if you find those cuts you will find the fish because that is where they're going to be waiting for their bait or excuse me for their food to come straight into their mouth all right guys i'm gonna let you go on this one enjoy the tip mark here waist deep weight fishing love you all hats off go out there get you a line cider and i will see you on the next video